B-boy, I want to ask you something. <laughs> Mom's voice splintered the silence. She sat across from me at the dining table, her eyes cast downward over high cheekbones. Mom could always make me feel like I was 10, even though I was 20 at the time. There's a boy in practically every Filipino family. Jim boy, Joe boy, just plain old boy. Boy's an artifact imported by American soldiers. I'm B-boy, after my dad. Uh, not for my non-existent dancing skills. <laughs> Before I realized my father's name wasn't dad, and that I was his namesake, I thought B-boy was a command, an order, as in, be good, behave, B-boy. <laughs> As a kid, I mistook my name for my parents' ambivalence over having a sissy for a son. I thought they were disappointed because I wasn't a real boy. Real boys like girl, girls, and I like boys. Without being told, I knew there was something wrong with that, that I was the wrong kind of boy. As a kid, I'd hear mom talk about the boys doing poorly in school, or dad brag about how the boys play ball. The boys never meant me. It meant my two younger brothers. When my parents called my name, Inwardly, I flinched, hearing an indictment of my gender trouble. Pops, bit by the Ali versus Frazier Thrilla and Manila bug, bought boxing gloves for me and the boys. They boxed the crap out of me. They floated like butterflies, stung like bees, while I, flat-footed, flailed about, leading with wrists and elbows, the exact image of sissies lampooned cartoons, thick snagglepuss exiting stage right. <laughs> Pop boxed me to teach me self-defense, but mostly I suspect to punch me into proper masculinity. He beat me up regularly. He beat me when I showed him my fourth grade report card. I got a U, unsatisfactory, in citizenship, talking too much. He slapped me. I was shocked. Who gives a shit about citizenship? <laughs> Pop sneered. Why do you talk so much? Like a girl. Somewhere I found the nerve to answer, Talking doesn't make me a girl. <laughs> what? I crossed a line. I talked back. Dad slugged me. Doubling me over, I rolled into a ball, covering my face and neck. He beat me through every room of the house. We made the entire circuit, from living room through hallway, past the bathroom, up the kitchen, through the dining room and back. I was a soccer ball. This was the first of many incidents that froze me into the closet. I feared dad would beat the life out of me if I did anything else that veered from acceptable masculinity. And mom, if her reaction to dad's soccer drill was any indication, she would rebuke me with the same tight-lipped silence, a silence I took as her approval of dad's rage. As a teen, I tried to date women, hoping to find that <laughs> mythical right girl. <laughs> but that always failed. Years later, when I broke up from my last attempt, Mom summoned me into the kitchen, her room for serious discussions. As I followed, her gait reminded me of the moral princes of Sinkil, the traditional Filipino dance. In Sinkil, crossed pairs of bamboo poles represent falling trees and branches buffeted by a typhoon. Followed by her faithful umbrella girl, the princess' bare feet step in, around, and between sharp clapping of the poles. Below the graceful, frozen posture, of their torsos, the princess and her attendant's legs twist and twirl to avoid getting caught. Can I ask you something, b-boy? She repeated her first move. Sure, if you really want to hear the truth, more to myself than her. Perhaps mom was ready for this conversation, but I hadn't rehearsed. What? Unsa? If you're ready to hear what I have to say, I barely, I barely heard my voice above the pounding of my heart. Her eyes remained thin. I saw a glimmer of tears. So, you are gay. I coughed an affirmative. I didn't even get to come out as much as follow her lead. I <laughs> step behind. Tears rolled from her eyes, but she refused to dab her face. Is it, is it something we did? Something daddy or I did? Self-recrimination in her voice. Taking my cue, I, I tried to reassure her, no, ma. It's just, just who I am. Just you? Not, not us? Not our mom? She perked up. Oh, I knew it. Her voice brightened. The change in direction disoriented me. <laughs> what did she know? <laughs> did being gay is okay? Hope flickered in my gut. Maybe I was wrong for not coming out earlier. 
After all, she supported me in my less macho activities. She sewed costumes for my high school drama productions, ran lines with me when I was in Oklahoma, ate old Annie to my Will Parker. Oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. I've got a wonderful feeling. Everything's going my way. Just that bad, too. I, I, I knew it. She wept. She really feels for me. Exhilaration swelled in my chest. Now, now I understand why, why you, I understand why you're such a bitch. <laughs> Bamboo poles slapped together, catching my feet. Mom's voice rose as she lit into me for years of adolescent disrespect I flung at her. Looking back, I see her accusations were justified. When Dad slugged me, I took it out on Mom. I would answer her back with all the venom I wished I could have hurled at Pops. Part of me blamed her for not defending me. And Mom was a safe target, my way to get back at Dad. And I selfishly ignored the times he bullied her, as silent as she was. For Mom, my being gay was a non-issue compared to how my cruelty had stung her. I could hear Dad pacing about the living room. I froze. Terrified, he'd come into the kitchen, kick me around the house for making Mom mad, but, but Mom wasn't done. She slammed the bamboo poles around me and Pops' ankles. You are just as bad as your father! Loud enough for Dad to hear. She bolted to the bedroom. Dad followed, slamming the door behind. From the kitchen, I could hear Mom caterwauling, a cross between a nun chanting rosary and a warbling Chinese opera diva. Dad's <laughs> rumbling punctuated Mom's aria, Basso profundo contrasting mezzo soprano. I couldn't make out the exact words, but the tone was not comforting. Is dad consoling mom? Is she trying to calm him down? Or are they egging each other on, preparing to come out the room and throw me out? Paralyzed, I wait for the next crack. The storm eventually calmed, and I felt safe enough to bed down on the living room floor. The middle of the sala was jammed with luggage and baby gear because me, my sister, and her baby were home for the weekend. Sleeping on the floor wasn't out of the ordinary. In my sleep, I tossed and turned myself into the hallway, the only way to the door, the, the front door. My head and shoulders fully blocked the exit to the living room. When my parents woke, I felt their footfalls approach and retreat from where I lay. Mom's clicking heels, Dad's steps, cushioned by tennis shoes. As they prepared to go out on one errand, I waited for Pops to crush me under his New Balance cross trainers. On his final step, on his final pass, Dad's steps slowed. I tried to breathe, tried to stop body quakes. I heard, or more precisely felt, him bend over me. I waited for the backhand of the headbutt. He grunted, not an angry grunt, just the noise a 65-year-old makes when he bends over. <laughs> he grasped the blanket that had slid down my waist, lifted it to cover my bare shoulders, and rested his palm on my head, as close to tossing my hair as he'd ever done, and stepped over me to the door. I was still scared shitless, but I took his gestures and attempted tenderness, a positive sign. After that, the only thing he ever said to me directly about my sexuality was to be careful about a deadly disease. AIDS was just becoming a part of the common discourse. Mom nudged me, almost kicking me out of her way. She carried my baby nephew in her arms. Watch him until we get back, she commanded. She sat, she sat Johnny in the crook of my arms and left. Oh.